Hey, welcome back to Crypto Saber. So today we're going to discuss a massive catalyst for Luna that I've yet to see be discussed anywhere on YouTube and no one's really talking about this because it has something to do with a platform within the CeFi space, centralized finance. Now, in order to not bury the lead here, I'm specifically talking about a financial company known as Yoro Savings. They've gotten relatively popular over the past year and a half. I mean, they've actually only been in business since of, uh, July 2020. But what does that matter? What does Yoro Savings have to do with Luna? And that's what we'll be discussing in this video today. And before we get started, let's take a quick look and see what Luna has been doing for the past year or so. So when we look at the charts right now, we can see that back in May, we had this big drop in Luna where it fell. I mean, let's just take a look and see how much we how much we fell here. Um, fell as much as 76%. This was back in May, May into June. And Bitcoin was also falling this time. There was a lot of mass liquidations, a lot of people getting margin called. And there was particularly a big problem with this with Luna um, because one of the popular platforms within the Terra ecosystem was Anchor and people were getting liquidated like crazy out of their Luna positions. And thankfully that's kind of been fixed. Fixed in the sense it's hard to get liquidated. But since then, we've seen Luna really skyrocket. I mean, right now, as we talk, we actually see Luna basically trading almost 100% above its prior highs. And that's impressive because if you look at Bitcoin right now, for starters, the rally in Bitcoin began much later than the rally in Luna. That's great to see. But on top of that, Bitcoin is actually managing to stay below its prior all-time highs, right? We did slightly break through it, but right now we're kind of trading below the all-time highs, while Luna has had no issues in uh, staying up here in the $43 range. But what is it going to take for it to actually go to $50, $60, $70? And I think I really have the key for this. Now, if we just look at the current market caps out there, Terra Luna is currently the 12th largest coin uh, in cryptocurrency. It used to be as high as number 11, but then we did have a coin such as Shiba in the past week overtake it, pushing it down a bit. And we also have the stable coin from Coinbase holding its slot right above. So to get started, we, we have to talk about three relationships here. First would be Luna's relationship to UST. And then UST's relationship to Anchor and then Anchor's relationship to Yoro. So we're going to go through this one at a time to really understand what's in store for Luna. So why is Luna so important within the Terra ecosystem? Well, any projects within Terra, they rely on a stablecoin known as UST. Now, UST and Luna are very, they basically work in combination to one another because the idea is if there's a demand for UST, then Luna will be burned in response to that. If there is if contraction of the of demand for UST, then Luna would be minted. So the general idea is if people really want to get their hands on UST, that stable coin, then Luna has to be burnt in the process. Now, that process is actually called seniorage. That's, that's what the Terra team names it. And not all of it necessarily gets burnt. So a portion of it gets burned and the other portion actually goes into the community pool. And the Luna within the community pool is actually then used to help fund new Terra projects. But we can even look and see how right now on Terra Station, if you look at the current proposals, they're planning on burning, they're planning on burning 88,000 Luna simply because, hey, we have all these projects, we're funding them, but there's a bunch left over and there was a vote put, put forward and people have agreed those who uh, have governance have agreed that, hey, let's burn all that Luna in the community pool. So you also have this aspect where maybe if not, so we know that some of the Luna gets burned right away when UST is created, some of it gets burned in the community pool, but even then we see that Luna can still be burned out of the community pool in which they're doing so, which is great because if there's less Luna being traded as a whole and it's being burned, then the Luna that you hold naturally goes up in value. Simple scarcity. Right. And let's take a look at the relationship of UST to Anchor. 
So if we go over to Anchor right now, and for those of you that are unaware about what Anchor is, now Anchor, it wants to become the flagship savings protocol within the Terra ecosystem, where you can basically get a stable 20% yield, a very minimal risk involved. Because one of the biggest issues when it comes to the DeFi space is that if you put some money into this liquidity pool, then you have to deal with a lot of impairment loss, or maybe you will get the rewards in some farm coin that ends up dropping so much in value that you have to constantly be selling it right away to try to retain some of that reward. Well, with Anchor, you deposit UST and you actually receive UST in return. So you deposit a stable coin and you receive a stable coin in return and you get a 20% return. That sounds amazing. And, the, and Terra really is trying to make sure that Anchor has long longe longevity within their uh in their uh, ecosystem so if you look at anchor right now there is 1.8 billion dollars deposited within anchor and if you look at the green bar here you can see how there's constantly been more and more deposits with time i mean the platform really i mean just from, from the sense of when it kind of started and began tracking was around March 18. So from March 18, we went from $53 million all the way to the 1.8 million, 1.8 billion that we see now, and it's still going up. And this is amazing because again, for those, for, for the people that want to invest their money into Anchor for that 20% yield, they have to get their hands on UST. And if the, there's that demand for UST, then Luna has to be burned in return, right? So just remember that correlation here. Demand for UST, Luna has to be burned. And if Luna is burned, it will push up the value of the existing Luna, the Luna you specifically hold in your wallet. Okay, so let's move on to the last relationship. What does Yoro Savings have to do with Anchor? Well, what is Yoro Savings? Now, I'm going to open this up on my app right now. I'm going to show you guys what I'm looking at as I do this. So this is how the home screen looks like on Yoro. So right now I have a little bit over $40,000 deposited with Yoro Savings. I've been depositing, withdrawing money left and right, I would say for the past year or so. I think I joined Yoro Savings in, in November. So my balance hasn't necessarily been at 40,000. At times it was only 10,000. A lot of this was just done for testing reasons. And how much do I make from Yoro Savings to begin with? Well, probability wise, it comes out that well, right now, my 40000 I, I would be lucky to make about 1%. But what they actually do, first of all, they guarantee an APR. It's not much, but as far as I know, going off memory here, it's about 0.3% guaranteed APR, which gets paid to you monthly. But then, for every $25 that you have invested with Yoro, you receive a lottery ticket. And this lottery ticket never goes away. It's in a drawing that occurs every single week. Now, as you can see here, I have 631 lottery tickets. Now, if you do the math, you, you'll ask yourself, well, if I have $40,000 balance, you're gonna have more tickets. And that is the case. Well, over time, what they started doing, what they have right now implemented at the very least, any balance over $10,000, you no longer get a ticket every $25 that you deposit. Now you have to actually deposit $150 for one ticket. So you get this diminishing returns, the more money you have your savings, which does suck. And I, I did get a few tickets from referrals here or there, but overall, yes, if you have over $10,000 of Yoro savings, then you will have diminishing returns. But if you have $10,000 and lower, then you can expect to make about 2 to 3%. And you do have the luxury of possibly, I mean, if we look at the prizes here, let's see if I can, uh, I mean, you can win $10 million, right? So some people, they just simply like doing this because it kind of feeds their lottery habits or things like that. Um, so it gives you a chance to make this, but in general, if you have under ten thousand dollars, you'll make about two percent or so on your money. Now, why do I bring all of this up? Well, if we head over to the FAQ page, this is the important part. So listen, and we go down to crypto savings buckets. This is where the magic lies. Now, let's click on what is a crypto savings bucket. So. It's a new type, so I'm going to read over here, the new type of savings bucket that allows users to earn a higher ticket ratio in the euro balance. Every $5 in crypto savings bucket earns you one ticket, bringing you an implied average of 8%. 
Now, if I'm not mistaken here, if we actually scroll, let me, uh, there should actually be a reference here. Specifically, yep, there you go. So this is the page, this is the page. Now, it says right here, Yodo converts your money into a very low volatility cryptocurrency known as stable coins designed to help to be held stable to a $1 USD peg. These stable coins are placed in a decentralized financial finance protocol called Anchor, and they actually link to Anchor to earn a much higher yield than what is normal. We pass off the interest rate that we earn on these cryptocurrencies back to you in the form of five times higher tickets on your deposit, which should bring the implied average APY to 8%. Now, what's also not said here in a different question, they actually say that there's not going to be a cap. So even if you have um, $40,000 deposited as I do, I would still get a ticket for every $5. So they're actually getting rid of that cap. Now, this is major. And this is major because if we also look at an email conversation that I had with them a few months ago here, I asked them about crypto buckets and when it's coming. And I had Kyle from Yoro tell me that, hey, sorry for the delay. Thank you for reaching out. The current ETA for crypto buckets is early fall. We are finalizing the integration and legal requirements right now. Now we are in the fall now. So I'm guessing, I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks, we are going to hear an announcement. This is, this is huge because Yoro savings um, back in January of this year, so January 2021, so about six months after they launched, they had a press release out where they already had 90,000 people that deposited money with them um, within their platform. Now, I would guess that by now, they probably have doubled, tripled that, and, and so on. But for them to actually offer crypto buckets to their users, users like myself, they have to get their hands on UST. And this is where we come full circle here, because if they have to get their hands on UST, we know what needs to happen. Well, more UST needs to be printed, and in order for more UST needs to be printed, Luna has to be burned in the process. And if we look at the current market cap of UST, to get an idea of how much UST is currently being circ circulated out there, you're also going to see this, where since, uh, if we do just year to date, let's say, you can see how the demand for UST has gone up. So this is the first run-up when, when Bitcoin really made a big run-up. And then once Bitcoin pulled back, we did see a demand pull back, but it kind of flatlined USD. And now we have this next big push. And if you actually look, this 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 new push in USD actually led to the, to the to the new rally in Luna. But right now we're still seeing the demand for USD go up. Now the key thing here that I want to discuss is it's hard to understand how Yoro is going to offer crypto buckets to its users. For example, if let's say I want to dedicate $10,000 to the bucket. Now, when they say bucket, it's basically like just a category, right? So I could have maybe $10,000 posited within the current bucket that I'm in where my money is FDIC insured and I'm only earning 1% or so. And then I could put the rest of the balance within the crypto bucket. It's just a way to categorize where your money is within their app. Now, if people do that, let's say they finally offer crypto buckets and I'm allowed to transfer money into that bucket. Well, how are they going to handle it? Are they going to tell us, hey, okay, once you do that, give us about a week or so. We got to take your USD that we have in the bank, convert it to UST and then deposit it into Anchor. Or maybe they are already accumulating a lot of UST in preparation for this because they want to make sure that the process is seamless, that if someone were to transfer money from their current bucket into the crypto bucket, that they could start earning a yield right away. And, by, and the only way for them to do so is if they already have UST within their wallet that they can basically apply into Anchor when the time is right. But either way, this is pretty major because the biggest part to take from this is we're seeing a crossover between the CFI space and the DeFi space. And if your savings is successful of this, not only is this a way to bring people into the DeFi space, in particular to the Taro ecosystem, because there could be some people that are even on either customers or people on YouTube. I might even make a video where people are going to say, hey, listen, Yoro Savings is only giving you 8% while they're earning 20% on the deposit. Why not cut the middleman out and go and deposit it yourself into Anchor? Sure, the process is not as simple. You may have to pay some fees. 
maybe you can't track your earnings as easily. All fine arguments to be made, but there are going to be people on Yoro who never really dabbled into DeFi. They're going to see this, they're going to click on the anchor link, they're going to see some YouTube videos, and they're going to get introduced to the Terra ecosystem, and they themselves may actually take future money, future savings, and invest it within the Terra ecosystem, buying UST, which once again is going to push up Luna. Now, how can this just fall flat on its face? Well, the Luna rally has been crazy. Let's put it like that. We might be able to say that, hey, listen, maybe this has been anchor for the past month, two months, three months. The reason why Luna has rallied so much is because all that demand for UST has already come from anchor, from, from Yoro. And maybe Yoro already has a huge nest egg of, of UST in their wallet and they're waiting to release the crypto buckets. And if they release the crypto buckets, they're not going to have to buy any UST for a while until they're able to gauge demand and see if there are people going to be depositing even more money and they have to go and try to get more UST. So there might be a muted effect. It all comes down to how they're handling this process. The most beneficial way for Luna holders would be if Yoro Savings has yet to really accumulate much UST whatsoever. Maybe they release the crypto buckets and tell everyone, hey, listen, for the first few months, there's only going, there's going to be a $500 deposit limit for every single person. Because once that happens and they see that a lot of people are kind of capping out at that deposit level, they might then know, okay, now we have to go and, and, and secure more UST and, and raise our limits. That doesn't take, away from, doesn't take away from the fact that still more people are going to be introduced to the tarot ecosystem that is going to benefit lunar holders. One other risk that we can talk about is the fact that Bitcoin will always be the sentiment of the crypto markets. If Bitcoin begins to crash, there's an argument to be made that Luna will crash no matter what, because when Bitcoin is rallying, everyone is euphoric about cryptocurrency. People want to invest money into the space. People want to learn about the space. The vice versa happens when Bitcoin is crashing. So you might watch this video. And you might decide, hey, listen, this actually is a legitimate catalyst. And there's an argument to be made that Luna could go up double over the next six months. Let me throw money into it. Well, what happens if Bitcoin crashes, right? What if Bitcoin halves its value? Um, Luna might drop to 30s, to 20s. It can definitely happen. But in general, I would say looking into this, um, I would personally, and I am going to be investing more money into Luna because I feel like this relationship this collaboration with Yoro and with, with Anchor, it's really going to set forth a new a new era for the Terra ecosystem. Because I think if Yoro is successful with it, then there are going to be other CFI platforms that are going to look at what Yoro is doing and they're going to decide to do the same exact thing because Yoro is actually taking enormous spread right now on these earnings, right? They're taking basically 12%. Sure, we're not calculating the fees that they might have to go through with, with converting their money and, and, and transferring and all that. But they're collecting 12%, which is massive, much more than they're currently making off their current users with the typical bank deposits. And that's basically it. I mean, if you like this content, if you have any rebuttals to it or any questions about it, drop them in the comments below. I just want to thank you for watching. Subscribe if you kind of like this type of content. Give me a like. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's kind of a nice reciprocation. And other than that, I mean, have an awesome day and uh, let's hope that Luna just keeps on pumping forward. Have a good one.